Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Linus Karamat, one of the Kenya Airlift Program Team Trainers. In this video, we're going to focus on verbal reasoning. More specifically, we're going to look at one of the subsections of verbal reasoning, and that is uh, critical reasoning. Today, we are going to tackle one of the question types that are tested in the critical reasoning section, that is bold-faced statements. So we've done a video explaining the overview of critical reasoning. So go look up uh, that video on YouTube. So let's begin. Well, first uh, statements, or otherwise called method of reasoning questions. This uh, critical reasoning question asks you to identify the method, the technique, or the strategy used by the author of an argument. Most likely, they will ask you to describe the roles played by bolded faces in an argument. So if you look at the, the stimulus of bold face statements, you will notice that uh, one statement or most likely two statements will be bolded. So that is what is usually asked for you to, of you to identify or uh, describe the role that is played by the two uh, bolded statements. For the most part, bolded phrases are exercises in properly identifying the conclusions so the conclusion is what the author is trying to convey to you or to make you believe. The premises, these are statistics, facts that are provided by the author uh, in support or to create uh, uh, a road or a map through which can, he can uh, come up with a conclusion. Or contextual information, this is information that, is, that links the premise to the conclusion. So typical phrasings that you'll find in the question stem of bold, uh, bold-faced uh, statements are like the bold phrases, the bold phrases play which of the following roles in the argument above, or the other provides support for the argument by, or lastly, which of the following methods of reasoning does the other, does the argument above exhibit? So look out for indicator words like uh, technique or which strategy is used, method, and by. These are usually indicators of uh, bold faced or stems that are linked to bold faced uh, statements or question types. The strategy of the, that you most likely employ in tackling bold faced uh, statements is, first of all, read the entire stimulus or the entire paragraph that is provided Make sure you understand what is being communicated. Secondly, identify the role that parts of the stimulus play before looking at the answer choices. So in your mind, uh, have a picture or a map where you are able to, like in your own words, uh, identify or describe what is being communicated, right? So if you are provided two bold faced statements, uh, come up with your own words or think uh, about what the the, what those two bold faced uh, statements mean so that will help you in narrowing down your answer choices okay but watch out for out of scope uh, uh, information you would most likely uh, you'll be better suited to avoid those and just use information that is provided in the in the stimulus okay so thirdly do not f do one bold phrase at a time so when you're analyzing the stimulus, it's always advisable that you focus on one bold face uh, statement. Try to think what is being communicated. What is the author or what part role that does this uh, statement play uh, in the context of the entirety of the, uh, of the stimulus? Th uh, fourthly, uh, watch out for multiple positions on an issue. This will likely occur if you are, for example, you are an economist and the stimulus is about an economic topic. Most of us will be tempted to use outside knowledge uh, to kind of uh, decipher or provide meaning to the bold faced uh, uh, statement. So it's advisable to use information in context to the paragraph that is, or the stimulus that is provided. Fifthly, the fifth uh, strategy, do not get lost in the verbiage of the answer choice. So verbiage here will uh, most likely be referring to uh, like vague answers. Some vague answers will be general, uh, for example, a general conclusion on something that is not specific 
or in, in the case of uh, convoluted statements which are a bit more complex so don't get lost in that it's uh, advisable you know uh, what context or what or by now you should have known what the probable answer would be so uh, don't uh, freak out in case you have convoluted statements or make an assumption if you face or you're provided with a vague answer choice. The sixth strategy, if you can confidently eliminate one part of the answer choice, do not read the other part. This will help you save time, it will help you like uh, avoid in the case of convoluted statements reading the second part of uh, the answer choice, which will uh, normally uh, uh, even confuse him more. So with that, uh, well, it's, most of us are by now, or you should be aware of the process of elimination. This will help you save time, it will help you narrow down answers that are wrong, and most likely uh, wind up getting the last two correct ones, or even the correct answer choice. So answers that do not match the structure of the argument, eliminate them. If you, for example, the bold uh, first statement is, provides an opinion or is an uh, analysis of cause and effect, do not uh, go for the, uh, the for, like, for example, if you are provided, if the bold first statement is an opinion and the two bold first statements provide uh, opinions on something do not be do not go for for example cause and effect uh, answer choices because uh, it most likely uh, won't follow the structure of the argument and you would end up uh, making the wrong uh, judgment on that answer choice S secondly answers that uh, only partially answer the the structure if one of one half of the answer is wrong the entire answer is wrong so if the answer partially answers the question, do not go for that. Uh, the correct answer choice for um, bold phrase statements would have both sides or both sides of the answer choice as being correct. So if one part is wrong, eliminate the other automatically. Don't waste time uh, overthinking about it. Uh, thirdly, do not eliminate an answer choice based on vague or convoluted structure. As I'd explain, if you find an answer that is vague, or for example, uh, the answer just choice just goes direct to the point and says the first part is a conclusion, the second part is evidence in support of the conclusion, don't necessarily eliminate uh, that because it could be right. So just make sure you scan the answer, other answer choices and make sure that the others are wrong first before you are able to uh, choose or eliminate that answer choice that is vague. For the sake, uh, for the case of convoluted structured uh, qu questions, these usually are uh, answer choices that consist of uh, wordy structures or some complex words are used in it. So don't be scared of, uh, with that. Let that not uh, let that not scare you. Uh, most of the time, uh, just a way of that the examiner is trying to trick you or to make you tired or make you not look at the answer choice. So uh, feel free to skip the convoluted answer choices and come back to them if necessary. So if you find a convoluted answer choices, uh, you can skip that uh, for the sake of time. Go through the other four answer choices. If they're all wrong, most likely uh, the convoluted answer choices will probably be the answer. So make sure you read that again and, make, and choose that if, uh, if, if the case is that the answer is correct or eliminate it if it's wrong. You are watching Success with Bob Mwiti Show, presented to you by Upstack America. Upstack America is a consulting company that helps immigrants find amazing higher education and job opportunities in the tech industry in the United States. You can find our programs by going to www.upstackamerica.com. Upstack America, we wake you up to the unlimited potential. So uh, let us look at a practical example. You can pause the video so that you can attempt uh, the example, then play after you are done. So our question reads, a study by Consumer Support Center revealed an inverse correlation, an inverse correlation between the amount of food 
advertising and the cost of food to consumers. This led experts to continue. This led some experts to, con to conclude that increased advertising means that increased competition forces food companies to lower their prices. However, in letting However, in letting increased competition account for both the cost decrease and the advertising increase, such experts fail to consider the fact that food companies simply lower the prices during advertising campaigns to increase sales. So uh, this uh, example that is provided here, mm, we can tell from the first uh, section of these answer choices is that uh, this is some form of uh, study that was done. This is what the authors provided for us. It is a kind of study that was done, and the study uh, reveals that an inverse relationship exists between the amount of food uh, advertising and the cost of food to consumers. So, uh, for the case of this example or this sentence, this will be our premise because it provides uh, a fact or evidence in support of something that the author is trying to. Uh, come up with a conclusion later. So uh, the second sentence reads, this led some experts to conclude that increased advertising means that increased competition forces food companies to lower their prices. So this is a form of an intermediate conclusion, but the intermediate conclusion uh, is for the case, for a case here, some, some experts, some experts, okay? So the author is saying that, uh, is communicating to us that some experts conclude uh, or reach the conclusion that increased advertising means that uh, increased competition forces food companies to lower their prices. So this is just a form of interpretation of, uh, the, of, the, of, the, of the study or the case, of the study that uh, the authors provided for us here as our premise. So this is, uh, for a case, an intermediate conclusion, right? So the uh, third sentence starts with a contrast word, however, uh, in letting increased competition account for both the cost decrease and the advertising increase, such experts fail to consider the fact that food companies simply lower their prices during advertising campaigns to increase sales. So we can tell that this is the author's opinion, all right? This other's opinion starts out with um, uh, providing uh, a premise for a case increased in increasing in letting increased competition account for both the work, the cost decrease and advertising increase, right? Till here. So from uh, this uh, from this uh, sentence here, the first part of this sentence, you can tell that uh, the uh, author is trying to uh, to disagree with or provide a contrary opinion to what uh, some experts had concluded, right? So it starts out by saying that uh, in letting increased competition account for both the, the cost increase, the cost decrease and the advertising increase. So uh, from the uh, experts' opinion, they concluded that competition is the force behind companies uh, reducing, lowering their prices and increasing the advertising, okay? So, um, the author, uh, in this contrast statement, starts out with evidence that was provided earlier so that he can lay the basis of providing his own conclusion, okay? So, the last part of this uh, sentence reads, such experts fail to consider the fact, watch out for this wording, that food companies simply lower their prices during uh, advertising campaigns to increase sales. So uh, the author provides evidence that the experts provided and contrasts that evidence by stating a fact or providing his own conclusion on the same that food companies simply lower their prices during advertising campaigns to uh, increase sales. So we, uh, we are automatically in our head, we are able to register that this is some evidence of sort or the author's conclusion uh, in support of, of something that he believes in. And this uh, first world first statement is a kind of opinion that, no, is an opinion by experts. And this opinion to them is a conclusion 
they arrived at based on this premise or this uh, study that was pro that uh, that was earlier stated in our first statement in our first sentence. So the question stem reads the the two portions in bold faced in the argument above play which of the following roles? A. The first is a generalization of the argument. So the wording generalization here. Watch out for that. That the argument presents as true. The second is evidence that supports the validity of that generalization. First of all, through uh, by going through the stimulus, we found out that uh, the first is an opinion, so it is not a generalization, okay? An opinion. The argument presents as true. So the argument we have seen uh, states that this opinion or the argument, the author of this argument, uh, states that he is against this initial opinion. So uh, for this uh, answer choice to say the argument presents as true. Is faulty. The second is evidence that supports the validity of that generalization. The second mm, bold faced uh, statement, as we have uh, identified, does not support the initial, the first bold faced statement. So it's actually in contrary to that or uh, provides evidence against that. So uh, the evidence that supports the validity of, of the first generalization is wrong in our case. So eliminate answer choice A. B. The first is an opinion that the argument argues against. The second is evidence against that one, that opinion. So uh, the first uh, bold faced statement, as we had identified, is an opinion true that the argument argues against. Very true. The argument that is provided here argues against this initial opinion by providing a contrary opinion to that. So this part is true. Also true. Uh, the argument argues against. The second is evidence against that opinion. So the second bold false statement, as we have found out, is a fact or evidence uh, that says food companies simply lower their prices during advertising campaigns to increase sales. So this evidence is against what the first omitted opinion by the experts who said increased advertising means that increased competition forces food companies to lower their prices. So for this uh, answer to B, uh, we keep it for the moment. Uh, there's some truth to it, and so there's a lot of truth to it actually. C states, the, pass, the first is a pattern of cause and effect. Watch out for this wording, cause, cause and effect, that the argument as a whole supports. Uh -huh. The second explains the reason behind this pattern. So true, this is a cause and effect uh, uh, argument or pattern where we see that um, in competition uh, that increased uh, advertising means that increased competition forces food companies to lower their prices. So the, the competition forces uh, uh, results in increased advertising and leads to uh, food companies lowering their, their prices. So we see some cost and effect uh, pattern there. But as a whole, that argument does not support or uh, this cause, this as 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 um, as such as C states, the first is a cause is a pattern of cause and effect that the argument as a whole supports. So we found out that the argument does not support the evidence or the pattern or the cause and effect pattern that is seen in the first bold first statement. So this part is not true. The second explains the reason behind this pattern. So the second is just a. So this part of this answer choice is definitely wrong because, as we have seen, the second bold-faced statement is evidence in the contrary to the first. So eliminate C. D says, the first is evidence that the argument uses in support of the main conclusion. The second is the main conclusion of the argument. As we have found out, the first is an intermediate conclusion. However, it is not evidence in support uh, that the argument supports that the, the argument uses to support the main conclusion. So for that case, this part, part of the answer choice is wrong. The second is the main conclusion of the argument. So this is the second part is uh, actually the arguments, the author's conclusion or what the author wants you to believe in. But the second part could be right, but the fact that the first part is wrong makes the whole answer choice incorrect. Moving on to E, the first is an opinion, but put forward in attempt 
to explain a certain pattern. The second, further supports that opinion. So it's true that the first uh, bold-faced statement is an opinion put forward in an attempt to explain a certain pattern. But on the contrary, the second uh, bold-faced statement does not support the first bold-faced uh, statement. So for that reason, we eliminate E. So as a, one of the strategies that I had uh, discussed earlier, uh, if one part of the answer choice is wrong, automatically the entire uh, answer choice is wrong. So if you look at the answer choices here, like this part, we can easily tell that the first part is wrong. So if you see th uh, that the first part or any part is wrong, automatically eliminate this. So in case you are running out of time, that is one of the strategies you will most likely employ. It will really save you time. All right? So uh, the correct answer choice well, for this case would be B, which states the first is an opinion that the argument uh, argues against, very true. The second is evidence against that opinion, very true. So uh, the recommended study materials for um, critical reasoning, more specifically bold faced statements, uh, are uh, the PASCO Critical Reasoning Bible, very comprehensive, very detailed, will really help you uh, with critical reasoning. Secondly, also look at uh, all the verbal from Manhattan Prem, Prep and uh, Veritas Prep Critical Reasoning uh, section. So with that, we come to the end of the video. Kindly join us in our GMA training sessions. We'll provide and elaborate more on topics such as this and provide practical examples that will help you in this GMA journey. Thank you.